Sometimes things get slow at Hand Grenade Division headquarters. It's hard to keep the staff amused and always dangerous when they start amusing themselves. The intelligence officer gets a little judgy at times, but he's mostly an okay fellow. Sarcasm aside, the divisional engineering officer is of course a resident wag. When he gets going with the intelligence officer, there's no stopping them. And they are capable of appreciating the efforts of others just not always the right people. The division chief of staff generally gets the last word. The familiar saying in teaching and instructing circles is that there's no such thing as a stupid question. The division staff seems to think it doesn't apply to YouTube videos. I'm not so sure. Let's take a look. The fabric from which the German uniform was produced consisted of more than 50% wool. On the face of it, this is a reasonable statement, though it's like saying your t-shirt was made from more than 50% cotton. That could mean this, 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 or this. Regardless, the accuracy of the statement depends on the time period. The evolution of the German Army field uniform was discussed in this channel. The link is in the description, but let's expand. The earliest Feldbluse, or field blouse, was introduced in April 1933. It didn't replace earlier garments, as each German soldier continued to be issued the Waffenrock, or parade tunic. The field blouse was just that, a uniform for wearing in the field, or in other words, combat. The uniform looked great, and was also of good quality. The blouse had four external pockets and an internal pocket for carrying a medicated field bandage. There can be no doubt that this was a feature for a combat uniform, not a dress uniform. In November 1934, the tunic was redesigned to accommodate internal web suspenders. These were to help bear the weight of a full combat load of equipment, including 60 rounds of ammunition, bayonet, and a full 750 milliliter water bottle. The blouse evolved throughout the pre-war years, mainly minor cosmetic changes. And during the war, changes tended to be for economy purposes. The pattern was simplified to ease production, and the fabric's wool content was reduced. Whether the uniform looked great is a matter of opinion. There can be no doubt it was intended to be functional. Note that the field blouse was intended to be worn with a long-sleeved collarless cotton shirt underneath. A cotton liner was buttoned into the blouse to prevent excessive soiling of the uniform collar. Later in the war, grayer field gray shirts with attached collars were issued in a variety of patterns. Theoretically, then, wool did not make prolonged contact with the soldier's skin. Modern armies have detailed expectations of how uniforms are worn. The collar of the wool field blouse was equipped with hooks and eyes to secure it closed. In garrison and training environments, it was expected to stay closed despite the discomfort it caused unless the unit commander gave permission to open it. In the field, circumstances dictated what liberties a soldier could take in order to be comfortable. Photos of marching soldiers often show them bareheaded, for example, to prevent heat injuries. Shirt sleeve order was another option for warm weather. An excellent and detailed reference of the field blouse is this book. The authors point out that the field blouse had vented cuffs, and go on to say, Today this feature may seem trivial, but it was certainly noticed by the French during the 1940 campaign. Many anecdotes mention this detail, describing the marching troops with their sleeves up. At the time, this seemed to further underline the modern image of the Wehrmacht. In 1933, very few military tunics had this characteristic, so practical for the wearer. However, the strict uniform regulations had priority over the comfort of the soldier. The book goes on to say that the wearing of sleeves rolled up struck people as being further proof of the modernity of the German army compared to other armies. In the cold season, it was warm enough. Germans issued greatcoats in the cold season for exactly the opposite reason. It was not warm enough. The padded winter suits followed in the second winter in Russia for the same reason. But discomfort in warm weather isn't the only reason for rolling up your sleeves. We all know that the natural wool is a rather prickly material. This is correct, though the wool changed during the war. The reason tunics took on a stone grey shade by 1943 was because, according to Cyrus Lee, up to 90% of the wool used in new field blouse manufacture was recycled, and new wool fabric contained up to 65% rayon, a man-made fiber which the Germans used to make up shortages of natural fibers. The increasing use of cellulose wool in uniform cloth shifted the color again by 1944 to a brownish olive shade. Cellulose was an organic compound found readily in the forested areas of Germany. The purest natural form of cellulose is cotton, which did not grow in Germany and had to be imported. 
And therefore, it was really too hot in woolen military uniforms, unlike cotton clothes. Closer to the middle of the war, the German uniform began to be produced from cotton. Despite its rarity in Germany, cotton was used to produce lightweight drill uniforms, which were issued to soldiers in training to prevent wear and tear on the wool uniforms. The first cotton combat uniforms appeared in 1941 for tropical wear in North Africa. The video is correct in noting that continental pattern purpose-built cotton uniforms for summer wear in combat appeared in the middle of the war, but by then tropical uniforms were also in use in southern Russia and later in Italy. As well, the early drill uniforms were dyed and modified for use in combat in all theaters. But the soldiers of the Wehrmacht on the tunic had already become a habit of rolling up their sleeves. As for the soldiers of the Red Army, for them the uniform was produced almost entirely from the cotton fabric. As a result, it was much lighter and more practical. The sleeves in the end were a little narrowed, so rolling them up was rather difficult and irrational. Overall, the video is awkwardly phrased, no doubt due to a language barrier, but none of the information is incorrect. I would suggest it is incomplete, but because it is a YouTube short intended for a 60-second runtime, also not surprising. Reenactors, filmmakers, and other hobbyists live or die by small uniform details, mainly because other hobbyists will have to pick apart what they see if they think their own knowledge has superseded that of the content creator. A final point of trivia regarding field blouse sleeves. Note the sleeve length of these German soldiers in First World War uniforms. In the Third Reich era, the sleeve hem was brought up to the wrist bone. This is pure aesthetics. Like wearing vertical stripes, the shorter sleeve makes the wearer look taller. Lost Battalions has a nice article on field blouse fitting that discusses this in more detail. For those interested, see the link in the video description. Work is continuing on the next video in the series on German interpretation of military law. If I can only get the division staff to stop watching YouTube and focus on work.